And he has certainly grabbed a great appreciation for what so many folks do day in and day out because he went out and did that for himself when he was going between schools. And he said, that is as hard a work as I've ever done. And he said, I love camp. Are you kidding me? Camp is great. <laughs> All of those things that Drew reeled off there, the thing that I looked at it and caught his attention and got our attention is about the roof work. Nothing more difficult than laying a hot roof. That's tough work, Dan. Ready to kick off. The Texans will have the football first. We'll get our chance to see Case Keenum. We'll also get our chance to see Easy Wachika. We talked about him at the top of the broadcast. One young man who's trying to make a big impression tonight and stick on this Texans roster. We're underway. The final preseason game of 2014, and Wachika will bring it out. Can he get that speed unleashed and watch a coup across the 20 down near the 21 yard line? And that's where the Texans will start on offense on first down. Corey Lemonier on the tackle for San Francisco. So Case Keenum, second year man out of Houston, getting the nod tonight. You see the numbers in the preseason. What do you need to see from Case Keenum? Well, those receivers you talked about a minute ago, he's going to have to hit them early and often. And the reason why it's such a big numbers game is that the tight ends have performed exceptionally well. Will they keep six, five wide receivers? That's in large part depending on how well the tight ends do. Rookie Alfred Blue gets the start at tailback in the I formation. And on first down play action, Keenum steps away from pressure and Blue with a little running room on the flip forward, and Blue's got a first down across the 33-yard line. Case Keenum making some hay under pressure. That's right. You like the fact that he got rid of the ball and didn't take a negative play, but again, perhaps Case, with a beat sooner, could have got rid of that ball. Excellent coverage downfield. He steps up in the pocket, feels the pressure. That's a nice job. Not much to criticize there. Craig Dahl on the tackle for the 49ers, but not before Alfred Blue gets the first down yardage. Blue now on the ground, trying to slip a tackle in the backfield, but penetration got there, and Chase Thomas slowed that running play up in a loss of two on the play. Tonight's starting lineups are brought to you by Houston Methodist. And Xavier Suofilo, who's been seemingly everywhere on the line, gets the nod at left tackle tonight. That's a good position. They moved him around. We'll see if he'll stick. And the backs and receivers, C.J. Fedorowicz, the highly thought of rookie, getting the nod at tight end tonight. For full bios and stats on each Texans player, visit HoustonTexans.com. Second and 12 at 31. Uh -oh. Blitz coming. Keenum got rid of it, intended for Devere Posey, and it's incomplete. Corey Lemonier, the second-year man from Auburn, was running untouched towards Keenum in the backfield as we look at the starting lineup for the 49ers mcdonald williams justin smith the expected starters when the regular season opens however the 49ers who do not announce changes during the preseason these are some of the guys you'll see out on the field during the regular season. You're not going to see many of these guys out there tonight. And last week, it was not their defense that really needed the help. I mean, 10 of their 11 starters, we saw them. They performed exceptionally well. It was their offense who's yet to score. An offensive touchdown this year was problematic. Third and 11. Keenum to the sideline looking for Keyshawn Martin. And the pass wow. is caught on the sideline for the first down. 47-yard line, Martin dragging the foot and moves the chain. Well, you don't get any better than that. If you want to make your quarterback look good, and he got that left foot in bounds and drug the other one as well. That was an excellent pitch and catch. You couldn't have placed that ball any better. Case Keenum with a laser shot to the sideline to Keyshawn Martin. And the red challenge flag there has been thrown by Jim Harbaugh. That's a tough call for Jim to make all the way across the opposite side of the field. I mean, that's... <laughs> He says he, it was out of bounds. San Francisco is challenging the ruling on the field of completed catch. Now, most coaches will have one person designated upstairs that will give them some advice with respect to whether or not to challenge that. Jim Harbaugh, the way he's wound up, he, he, make, he would make that call anyway. Showing off the throwing arm early. Jim Harbaugh slinging the red flag onto the field in Houston. Walt Anderson's been under the hood. So has Spencer Tillman up here in the booth watching that catch on the sidelines. Rule the catch. What do you see? Well, Kevin, the left foot is in. It's really about the right foot. If you can kind of stop it right there, that right foot is the one that you want to look. Was the ball in control when that right foot was down? Clearly, the left foot was inbounds. No question about it. You saw the little black tire flip up. That gave you an indication that, in fact, his feet was in the turf as it came up. So that was pretty good. Here's Walt Anderson. 
after reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. Yep. Catch, touchdown. Indisputable video evidence is the criteria to overturn a call. It was ruled a catch on the field, mm -hmm. and there wasn't anything that you saw in there that would overturn the call on the field. Well said. And again, it was a tough call for Jim to make all the way from the other side of the field. He does have a coach that's up here on our side, but that was a very difficult challenge. So the catch for Keyshawn Martin and the first down for the Houston Texans in the first and ten line this quarter is brought to you by Verizon. Fedorowicz the motion man for the Texans from their 47 yard line. Blue in trouble. Broke one tackle but down at the 45. Second time tonight already that we've seen penetration from Chase Thomas into the backfield. Well the big problem is on that far side CJ Fedorowicz when you get pressure or penetration you're trying to run a stretch play to get to the corner. The slightest bit of regression on that line of scrimmage is going to totally totally disrupt that play again. When you're in offense, it's a creative process. Defense is destructive. It takes a lot more to create than it does to destroy. Second down at 12. Jonathan Grimes now in the backfield as the lone setback. Keenum incomplete timing off between he and C.J. Fedorowicz on the three-step drop. You see, that's what we talked about in the open, Kevin. It's all about consistency. You make a great play, unbelievable catch. Keyshawn Martin dragging on the sideline to save it for you, and then that comes out in Aaron. Now we don't know whether or not there was a miscommunication with CJ or not, but the ball looked like it was high and away, and that was really more an execution issue. So now Fedorowicz heads to the sideline as Martin Thomas and Devere Posey come on in a three wide receiver set. Third down and 12. Keenum in trouble. Chased. Throws it, and it's dropped. A sliding attempt by Jay Prosh would have been a tough catch and would have been well short of the first down. Aaron Lynch and Demarcus Dobbs were hot in pursuit of Case Keenum, forcing him to throw it away and throw it incomplete. Well, clearly he had pressure and he's on the move, but Jay Prosh, you're not going to get the ball very much as a fullback in this system via the pass. But when you get it, you got to make that play. And Case did pretty much all he could on that one, avoid the pressure and then attempt to throw. Chris Boswell will punt. James asking everyone to stay out of the way. Got a good roll to Boswell, and James is going nowhere. Well, the Texans' punt coverage in this preseason has been outstanding, and a wonderful tackle by Shiloh Ko to bury the Niners inside their own ten. Well, I think anytime you go out and win, uh, no matter when you win, winning winning is important. And anytime you step on the field. Uh, to represent this organization and this city and and uh, each other, you know, it's important to go out there and win. So I, th I think it gives everybody a good feeling, you know, when you fly back from Denver after a win, regardless of whether it's preseason, regular season or not. More important for Bill O'Brien as he's building a franchise here in Houston, as he's trying to get his team on the same page? The winning part of it? Yeah. Absolutely. Winning is, is all that matters ultimately. We'll forget about these preseason games. It's about winning when the regular go comes around and that's any all anybody will remember winning <laughs> Michael James on the carry for the first down tackled by Max Bulla for the Houston Texans there were discussions generated by Jim Harbaugh this week that Colin Kaepernick would be the starting quarterback tonight Colin Kaepernick is not the starting quarterback tonight it is former Jacksonville Jaguar Blaine Gabbert who is as of now the number two guy in San Francisco Gabbert looking deep down the far sideline and he overshoots Stevie Johnson the new Niner who came over from Buffalo who had a step on that far sideline the passing complete when Gabbert actually had a pretty good outing last week you know after he eventually started out with a very poor 17.9 passer rating he improved that did a nice job but again that the coverage by the Texans and that was a little bit loose in the man front look our scoreboard this quarter brought to you by Hyundai. No score on that scoreboard as we see the first Niners possession of the night. A little bit of room to the 25 yard line on the ground for San Francisco. That carry from rookie Carlos High. 
Chris Clemens, the veteran, making the start tonight in the Texans secondary. And secondary is one of those areas, and we'll talk about this throughout the night, one of those areas that Bill O'Brien and his staff are really watching closely, very competitive back there. That's right. We saw Shiloh Keo in the coverage unit a minute ago make an outstanding play. Third-year player heading into his fourth year made an outstanding play. He finds himself in a competitive situation. Third down and five, and off the fingertips of Stevie Johnson, the pass is incomplete, and the Niners will have to punt Elbert Mack out there on the cover. There's another guy on the back end that's competing for spot back there. Gabber does a nice job of setting his foot and planting that ball. But again, just beyond the outstretch end of the receiver, and Mack is right there in the spot. You talked about the crowded back end. Mack is a part of that group, not so much among the safeties, but, I mean, he's just... Again, a, one of those numbers game situations where he's got to perform exceptionally well. The guy, Travis Labhart, who has made an impact in this preseason, can he make an impact tonight and stake a claim to a roster spot? Labhart with the fair catch. Nope. Yes, mm. fair catch. Started, stopped, started, stopped, and he'll stop at the 34 yard line. Texans offense going back to work. Scoreless here in Houston. And email your best fan photos. We want to see them. Fan picks at HoustonTexans.com. Your best fan photos. A chance for you to get on the air tonight. Send those emails. Fan picks at HoustonTexans.com. Nice. <laughs> Humans, animals, it doesn't matter to us. Good look right there now. It's a, it's a large part of the animal kingdom that is a big fan of the Houston Texans. Stay tuned to see if we feature yours. That's about as cute as it gets there. These are pretty creative, too. The other one, the woman and the man got together to create 99, J.J. Watt. That was kind of cool. Speaking of 99, there's a bunch of them. There's one and one cushion guy. Future linebackers and my five dad, techniques. My dad says run the ball. <laughs> <laughs> see if dad gets any attention here. First down and 10 at the 34-yard line. Yep, dad got the call out for Blue with the carry. And Blue... Out to the 36-yard line, Nick Moody on the tackle of the rookie, Alfred Blue. Alfred Blue, again, his uh, LSU Tigers will be in here on Saturday. That's going to be a big game against Wisconsin. And, and Leonard Fournette, the young freshman that's replacing him, and it, not so much him because Les Miles has a lot of running backs, but uh, it's going to be a big one here at NRG Stadium Saturday. Our first and ten line this quarter brought to you by Verizon. Second and eight. Keenum looking deep, oh. looking for Devere Posey in double coverage, and the pass incomplete. Posey was flanked by Daryl Morris and Craig Dahl, and it's third down. Well, he had a notion. Again, the good thing about it, when anytime you see a big time play, it takes that long to develop. You look at the protection. The protection was solid in the pocket. Here you see Case. Again, the in rushers upfield, double coverage inside and out. That's he wrecks Grossman that one, baby. He heaved it down the field, but trying to make a play, trying to impress the coaches. Third down and eight for Case Keenum. Pass incomplete. A little contact, it looked wow. like before it came in. Chris Cook was defending Keyshawn Martin. Chris, from this vantage point, like he came through a little early. Yeah, pardon. He got over the shoulder of Keyshawn there on that particular. If, if you're going to be policing this, you can see the hands there over the top clearly all over Keyshawn Martin. I'm, I'm shocked that as aggressively as they've been dealing with those hands this preseason, they didn't even call that one. Chris Boswell, who handled the punting duties last week, punting again tonight. LaMichael James at the 21 and tripped up immediately. Shiloh Kao with two huge special teams plays. That's how you make a roster, making plays like that on special teams and punt coverage. Well, I tell you, it's beautiful to watch it happen. The guys get married, got a kid, and you know what? You know the core values of a guy really quickly when you see him make back-to-back -back plays like that. It's all about effort and energy. Shiloh Kao in open space. No score, 943 remaining in this first quarter. Texans with two very good plays in punt coverage have the Niners down at their own 21-yard line. Texans season tickets for 2014 are all sold out. Make sure you're part of the action in 2015 by joining the season ticket priority waitlist now. Visit HoustonTexans.com for more information. On first down, the pass 
to Quinton Patton. Pulled in right near the first down. He's got enough to move the chains just across the 31 yard line. Coverage by Andre Howe. It was a nice bang bang play. Great coverage by Howell on that one. Who's also been a special teams performer, done exceptionally well. Had an interception a couple of weeks ago, and there's Coach Ligashevsky celebrating the big open field tackle by Shiloh Kale a minute ago. He's going to be very busy about evaluating talent today. First down, dodging and dancing up the middle for a few yards across the 35 yard line to the 36. LaMichael James. Picks up five. Our starting lineups brought to you by Houston Methodist. Owen Crick got the nod tonight. Not a lot of playing time for these guys who are expected to be the starters, but the linebacking core, a lot of guys with an opportunity. And Shiloh Keo back in the lineup tonight after missing a couple of games. For full bios and stats on each Texans player, visit HoustonTexans.com. Second and five, picking his way forward is Carlos Hyde, Max Bullock on the tackle. Let's go downstairs to Drew Doherty. Yeah, guys, Bulla had a standout career at Michigan State. And when we talked to Bill O'Brien yesterday, he talked about how smart, how tough he is. And multiple times he brought out what a great communicator Bulla is. It's been important. He started tonight at that Mike linebacker position where he's calling the signals. Drew, thanks very much. Spencer, what have you seen from Max Bowler that you've liked in this preseason? Well, I think Drew just hit it right in the head right there with his intelligence, a two-time academic performer, all-conference performer. You can see it show up on the field. He is everywhere. Gabbert with time and almost intercepted by Chris Clements. Had the chance on the overthrow to pick that one off. Can't pull it in, but it's fourth down, and the Niners will punt. You're talking about on the back end, you can see that the pocket was there, not immediate pressure, plenty of time to throw, but again, excellent coverage on the back end for the Texans. Again, Glavitt does a good job of planting his feet. That's just high and away, nearly intercepted on the back end for the Texans. Again, just to follow up on the thought about, you know, what we've seen so far with uh, Bulla in the back. Max is just a, two weeks ago he had an interception. Then he had a tip ball that gave it an interception to Pleasant on the back end. Being involved in the play, creating, affecting the offense is what he does, and he's just, he's smart. That's why he's always in position to make plays. Labhart at the 15. Labhart to the 21, and then a hard shot to drop him at the 21 yard line from Nick Moody. Watch for the Yahoo Sports Fantasy Football standout to be announced during the fourth quarter. It's your chance to win four Houston Texans VIP tickets to a regular season game. Stay tuned to win and start a league today at yahoo.com slash fantasy football. You know, Kevin, you and I were talking about before as Coach Bill O'Brien looks on that one GM's junk is another coach's treasure. There are going to be a lot of guys today that wind up you know, doing an excellent job in attracting the attention of some people out there that really need standout performance. Speaking of GMs, GM Rick Smith going to join us in the third quarter tonight. We'll talk with him about some of the decisions he and the coaching staff have to make after tonight's game. Keenum. Incomplete on first down intended for Mike Thomas at the 25 yard line. And if he can pull that one in, if Keenum can get it to Thomas, there's some room to run on that sideline. Really was. And again, 49 is just rushing four on that particular play. It wasn't rushed, was case on that one. The ball was just a little bit thrown beyond the outstretched arms of, of Thomas. And so, again, back to that execution. That's what Case has got to nail down. Second down and 10 at the 21. Again with time. Keenan, nobody open. Now flips it forward to Devere Posey, who's got the first down to the 32. Keenan making a little room with his legs there. Dante Johnson on the tackle for the 49ers, but a first down. You know, and there are a lot of people out there that would criticize Case Keenan, but here's the reason why it's not to be criticized. Just a three-man rush. That means you've got more bodies in the back end and coverage, so nobody's open. So he pulls it down and does what he does exceptionally well, and that's run the football when he has to. Single setback is Jonathan Grimes. Grimes gets the carry. Nice. This little stutter step by Grimes and a good run to the 40 yard line. The leading rusher in the preseason able to get good yardage, but we've got a little laundry on the field at the 31 yard line. I think there's going to get the 49ers, but again. Personal foul, face mask, number 96, defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Corey Lemonier with the personal foul. So not only is it a good run from Jonathan Grimes, but another 15 yards. 
Take a look at the top of your screen out here. You're going to see him working on the outside. See the hand to the face there on the stretch and extended arms. Once a guy extend those arms and they're on the face mask, you're going to get caught every single time. But great job by Grimes sifting his way through for positive yards. Jim Harbaugh in midseason facial expression form. Nice. Grimes, nice cut back again. Grimes with the edge. Grimes trying to turn the corner, and he's got another first down to the 33. 12-yard gain for Jonathan Grimes. Craig Dahl on the stop. Back-to-back -back good runs by the William DeBerry Cross. Very intelligent run, hugging the line of scrimmage as he comes downhill and will eventually make his way back all the way around the trash, making the defender on the outside commit and then using the extra speed and the engagement of the wide receiver to take advantage of a little nice little corner advance. You see the numbers coming into tonight. The only back over 100 yards in the preseason. From the 33 on first down. Keenum to Posey. The beer Posey down at the 29-yard line in the arms of the rookie Chris Borland out of Wisconsin. Really like Posey in those situations. A big frame guy, a nice quick slant route to get you a nice five yards. That's really impressive to see him catch that play. You see, now they're going to have to bring a safety down to cover that if they truly intend on stopping it, <laughs> that's going to give Case an opportunity to take a shot upstairs. Second down and six. Grimes and Prosh behind Keenum in the I formation. Grimes. Again, a little bit of running room. Grimes has a knack for finding the hole when it doesn't look like there is one, Spencer. Yeah, and I use a description of an Edgerton James type runner, a slow two fast through guy that kind of sifts and finds his way there. Everybody's struggling to get position on the guy, and it's a real time proposition for an offensive lineman. But the back has got to assist the lineman, commit to one side, and allow the defender. See, that's the thing that people don't realize. It's the defender can see the running back. The offensive lineman cannot. So the back can actually help set up a block by how he runs. Third down and two at the 25. Four-man rush. Keenum throws it short, complete to the 31, or the 21-yard line, rather, and a first down for Ryan Griffin. Well, the 49ers are really peeling off that conscious of Griffin, who scored a touchdown last week in a decider. And if they don't not careful, these backs are going to come wide open on wheel routes or something to the perimeter. Blue on first down. Pushing forward, and Alfred Blue with a good leg churn to get to the 15. Chris Borland on the tackle, but a flag down. Personal foul, illegal roll up block, number 69, offense. 15 yard penalty, still first down. That's the veteran Tyson Claybo called for the penalty. Claybo's probably going to be that swing tackle, and you know, again, we'll see if we can see that roll up block here. Yeah. Yep, that is. You can't get down on the on the knees like that. And, and matter of fact, a couple of years ago against the New York Jets, that cost Brian Cushing his entire year, wind up having surgery on that type of rollback block. That's why that rule exists. So first down at 25, a little adversity for Case Keenum to deal with here on what's been a solid possession show so far. to the sideline. Keyshawn Mark gets some of that yardage back down inside the 29 to the 28-yard line. Case took a shot on that one, and then the thing I like about it, once Keyshawn got that ball in his hand, he burst up field for the nice extra yards. Again, you can see just a four-man rush, takes the shot, does Case, but the delivery to stay in that pocket, and then watch the burst on the back end with Keyshawn. Sit that ball in the other hand, you may get an extra yard or so. Tank Carradine was the guy providing the heat. Keenum able to get rid of it. Second down and 17. Keenum again to the sideline. This time Devere Posey and Posey fighting forward. They're going to mark him down at the 23-yard line. They'll say down by contact after the five-yard game. You see, the asset that 
a receiver the size of Posey is. You've seen it demonstrated on that play right there on the slant. Opposite side, not so much, but able to break single coverage, get extra yardage after the contact. We used to refer to those as yak yards, yards after contact. But again, a big body frame receiver can do that, particularly against one-on-one -on -one coverage. Third down and 12 now for Case Keenum and the Texans. First two drives resulting in two punts. This one much more effective. In field goal range at least. They want more. Third and 12. Keenum over the middle. That pass knocked away incomplete. Dante Johnson stepping in front of Devere Posey to knock it away. And it's fourth down. And on comes Chris Boswell to try the field goal. Well, you can't blame Case Keenum for going to the hole once again to a six foot three, six foot two and a half, 214 pound wide receiver because Posey's been that type of target. Case just came a little bit short there. Again, a lot of consistency, though, shown on that drive, with the exception of the one errant pass early in the drive. 41 yard field goal attempt for Chris Boswell. Leckler on the hold, and the kick by Boswell is good. The kick by Chris Boswell, and the rookie gives Houston the 3 0 lead with 2.20 to play in the first here in Houston. Texans have a 3 0 lead, 2.20 remaining in the first quarter. The end of the preseason, of course, means the beginning of the regular season. And on Tuesday, it meant time for the team luncheon to kick off the season. Fans pouring in to see coaches and players, executives, and get the chance to hobnob with guys like Brian Cushing, Bob McNair, the owner, Bill O'Brien, of course, the head coach, J.J. Watt, resplendent in his tie, and a Nice little speech from J.J. And the voice of the Texans, yeah, Mark that? Vandermeer, <laughs> making an appearance as well. You took the words right out of my mouth. I saw Mark there looking all stately in his red tie, looking dapper. It was a great job on radio. Along with Andre Ware, former Heisman Trophy winner. Randy Bullock's kickoff, three yards deep. LaMichael James will bring it out. And James is not going to get back to the 20 yard line stacked up at the 17 coverage on punts and kickoffs tonight has been exceptional for the Houston Texans. Whitney Merciless was in there on that stop along with Akeem Den. Merciless is another one of those guys who had really performed up until last week on special teams needed to make a play. The former Oregon Duck decides to take it out. He's going to do it. But again doing a nice job of lane integrity are the Texans coming down on coverage only converging after the runner commits to one direction or the other just a great job of working for attack mentioned another guy who was in on that stop Shiloh Kale, who has been involved in every tackle on special teams so far tonight on first down a little flea flicker Gabbert gets it back pressure comes Blaine Gabbert gonna run a flag is down as Gabbert heads out of bounds at the 27 yard line right near the first down Whitney Merciless got into the backfield and disrupted that flea flicker fortunately for the Texans fortunately for the Texans Holding number 67 offense 10 yard penalty still first down why because the Texans had rolled to a single safety look and it was Shiloh Kalo who was deployed to the middle of the field and again that meant you had one on one coverage on the perimeter and but for the fact that the pressure comes from Merciless pushed Gabbard inside maybe there's a wide open receiver on the opposite end right the 59 finally showing up two weeks in a row a hold on Daniel Kilgore who was the backup to Jonathan Goodwin and now moves into a starting role for the first time in his NFL career. Getting the nod tonight in the fourth preseason game to get the reps. First of 19. Back of the nine. Nice. Pressure comes. It's merciless again. And he sacks it. Gabbert is dropped at the five yard line. Back to back plays by Whitney Merciless. See, that's how you play with leverage. And again, finally, Whitney Merciless is not thinking. He's reacting, using that athleticism that he used at Illinois. The right hand up the field, separate and get away from that guy and still drive to the quarterback of the target. That's how you make great plays. And a wide five technique, arm under and underneath that tackle to make a great play on Gap. Tough task for Carter Bykowski over there to handle Whitney Merciless. He has not on the last two. Nice. And there's Whitney Merciless again. 
making a statement. Well, Michael James Ooh. with a loss back to the three. Kevin, I'm telling you, that makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck, and I'm an offensive guy, but let me tell you, when you want to see a guy shed and come off the outside, widest guy, which is the tackle, watch Merciless again come here off of this, again, we call it a wide technique. It's like a nine, a movie nine, and, and that means that he's got to contain. That's his primary responsibility, not to let anything get outside of him. He anchors, but he also plays on the opposite side of the ball. An excellent back-to-back -back play series for Merciless. Third down at 24, back at the three-yard line. James just trying to get a little breathing room. He's got some and more. LaMichael James pinballing forward to the 20-yard line, a 17-yard run. Chris Clemens and Shiloh Kao stop him short of the first down, but a nice run under duress by LaMichael James. And as we praise number 59 on that last play, again, this is what happens when you can't really get disengaged, and Merciless had an opportunity to fall back into that play, just couldn't get off the block. We have reached the end of the first quarter with our score in Houston, the Texans three, and the 49ers nothing. Texans TV will continue from Houston after these messages. Our scoreboard this quarter is brought to you by HEB, and Romeo Cornell likes what he's seeing from that scoreboard on the defensive side, a shutout through one quarter as Labhart comes up on a short punt, breaks the first tackle, and Labhart down at the 45-yard line. Excellent field position for the new Texans quarterback. Case Keenum led him to the field goal his last time on the field, so now it's time for Tom Savage to make his debut tonight. I think it's clear that Case Keenum held serve, and let's see now if Tom Savage can pick up where he left off last week and a come behind from behind victory over Denver when he executed well in the red zone and he's got great field position to work with from a play caller's perspective. But you can you can do a lot with this midfield position. We sat down with Tom yesterday and chatted for a while. You could tell the confidence and the comfort growing for the rookie from Pitt. That's right. Confidence comes from demonstrated performance, and he got a lot of that last week. On first down, Grimes looking for a little running room, bouncing off a would-be tackler, and is down to the 49, a four-yard gain for Jonathan Grimes. Quentin Dial on the tackle for the 49ers. Yeah, I may catch it from Coach after the broadcast, but, it, you know, I really like, Kevin, how he paints the field. And what I mean by that is a good play caller understands that if you got a defense in there that you want to run a little bit and you've had problems, you want to run the ball to the right, maybe do something in the middle, then come back to the left side, make them cover defensively the entire breadth or the width of the field. First the 10 line this quarter is brought to you by Yahoo. There's Grimes across midfield down to the 48 yard line. Three yard gain for Jonathan Grimes. Dial and Jimmy Ward on the tackle for the 49ers. And then there's some other times when it really is just about taking advantage of what the defense is giving you. You know, you may have designs to run the play. In a given area, you have to call a play from scrimmage. But if they're overloaded to that side, your quarterback has the latitude to get out of that play and get you in a better option. Third down and three for the Texans, leading 3 0 here early second quarter in Houston. Savage under pressure. A flag is down, and so is Savage back at the 48 yard line. Tank Carradine on the sack. The second year man out of Florida State getting to Savage. Illegal hands, hands to the face, number 95, defense. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. And now we know how he got there. <laughs> and a first down for the Texans. You know, hands to the face is something that's always going to be caught. It's going to be an issue. And again, you can see the hands to the face right there. Anytime the arms are extended, they're going to catch it, particularly when it's just a three-man rush, and that center guy in a 3-4 is by himself in a white jersey. You stick out like a sore thumb. Especially when you keep it there for the duration <laughs> of the play. <laughs> Didn't see it the first time? Keep That's watching. Right. So new life for the Texans' offense after the penalty. First down and 10 for the 43. Grimes trying to bounce away. He cannot get away from Nick Moody, who's made a couple of plays tonight 
for the 49ers as we check in downstairs with Drew Dory. Yeah, guys, Tom Savage told us yesterday in the meeting that the game has slowed down significantly for him. He says the game's not as intimidating as his 6 a.m. meetings that he has with Bill O'Brien. He says he goes into those so amped up that he's shaking just a little bit because he's so excited to learn and to show what he's learned. A little bit of nervousness, I would imagine, as well when the coach is in there quizzing you, asking a ton of questions about his grasp of the offense. Second and 11. Savage under heat gets away from Carradine. Savage showing his mobility finds Fedorowicz for positive yardage. That's a Houdini play right there. That's nice heads up savvy play and again to make the point about the game slowing down for him. If a quarterback is under duress like Savage is on this play he probably feeling the pressure from the other side is going to pull that down or either take the sack. Nice job for the big guy of moving avoiding the rush and get rid of the ball and delivering a completion. So instead of a big loss on the play, it's a four yard gain, third and six for Savage and the Texans. Savage short to Martin. Keyshawn Martin can he get away? He cannot from Jimmy Ward. Chase Thomas came over to help finish off, but Ward, the rookie out of Northern Illinois, got a hold of Martin, wouldn't let go. I like the choice and the decision here to stay in on this thing and try to make it happen again. You're moving the ball down the field. Let's see how they execute. Fourth and five. Not only will they go for it, they'll hurry it up. Switch route underneath. On fourth down. Pressure up the middle. Nice. Devere Posey with a catch. And Devere Posey very close to the first down. It'll depend on the spot. And I don't know that they're going to give him the chains. Uh, they're going to come up short, I think. But the, the, the thing I like about that play was he saw the in route, the switch route underneath. That's where the opening was. And it's just taking what you get. Now, they will rule a fumble afterwards. James Ferentz able to recover. So it's a new possession. In fact, they rule it a fumble. One official started to mark up there, mm -hmm. indicating that progress had stopped, but the ball pops out and Ferentz recovers for the Texans. If they rule it a fumble, it'll be a first down then. If it's recovered by the Texans. Stop prior to the ball yeah, coming loose, it but it's short of the line of the game. San Francisco's ball, first down. So they go with the first official ruling, which was progress had been stopped just shy of the 33 yard line where they needed to get for the first 49er ball when we return. We'll be checking Twitter all night to see what fans are saying about the action on the field. Use the hashtag Texans preseason and we could feature your tweet on tonight's broadcast. Be sure you follow the Texans on Twitter at at Houston Texans for all the latest news behind the scenes photos and more and as we stepped aside Bill O'Brien threw the red challenge flag and so they are going to take a look at this one to see if he did indeed make it to the line to gain for the first down Spencer Tillman well, let's take a look at it and you can see again Devere Posey's big long frame he may have been over it from this angle it's kind of hard to tell the first shot though I mean obviously he didn't get it on the second effort but and then clearly the ball is out at that point but if they ruled his forward progress was stopped. After reviewing the play the ruling on the field stands yeah. but the ball was short of line of game. Houston is charged with his first time out. And awfully hard to find anything that would overturn the call on the field there. Yeah. That was a good call. <laughs> You're even. <laughs> He's a piece of work. I think he's upset that they didn't rule it a fumble. Mm -hmm. well, they wouldn't have gotten it back in there. Texans recovered it. On first down, well, Michael James dodging forward, and that's the benefit of a 5 9 frame. He can <laughs> slip through one of those little creases, and he gets a little extra yardage to the 38. That was a back a long time ago. You would remember his name, Joe Washington, wore number 24, not 23. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of like smoke through a keyhole is what we used to call him. <laughs> That's what LaMichael James is like. He's he's tough to see and elusive as all get out. Second round pick in the 2012 draft by the 49ers after a senior se or final season at Oregon. He rushed for over 1,800 yards. Second and six, Gabbert over the middle, and it's incomplete. 
looking for the tight end Asante Cleveland, the rookie out of Miami, and it's third down. And Max Bullard there in coverage, and again, he's one of the guys we talked about in that inside linebacker position. Always making plays, seems to be around the ball. Does an excellent job of dropping in coverage, too, which you, is a bonus for an inside linebacker. Typically, you're looking for the more athletic guys at the outside position, Jack, in this particular defensive scheme. Third down and six at the 38-yard line for Gabbert and the Niners. Gabbert under nice. pressure, and Gabbert breaks free. Gabbert somehow eludes the sack, and Blaine Gabbert's got the first down. What a scamper by Blaine Gabbert. How did he escape? No, they're going to say he was down, and it's fourth down. Gabbert can't believe it. The officials will rule that he was down. Both quarterbacks showing elusiveness, escapability. Blaine Gabbert pulls it down, and I'm telling you, he was just surrounded by Texans. I'm not sure he was down, but I tell you, they called it. They're trying to protect the quarterbacks, and they're going to do everything they possibly can, but sometimes, and I think it's fair to say, they get it wrong. Jason Ankra had him, but he got away. Harbaugh's incredulous. <laughs> He's not happy with that one. Fourth down. Labhart at the 25. Labhart across the 30 and down, just shy of the 34 yard line. In the arms of Dante Johnson, who's made several plays on special teams tonight for San Francisco. Still 3 0 Houston, 9 22 to play, first half. Spencer, you made the comment that Jim Harbaugh was not too thrilled with the uh, call of a sack on the Blaine Gabbard scramble. He expressed himself vigorously during the timeout, and Walt Anderson has assessed a penalty against Jim Harbaugh. And there's the flag. He had enough of that right there. You know, Jim's never been one to shy away from anything. He's going to express himself, but preseason or not, these officials are not going to take that from even Jim Harbaugh. Now, Jason Anchor got credit for a sack. Jim Harbaugh does not believe that sack was warranted for the rookie from Nebraska. Route 66 for him. <laughs> so after the penalty, second possession for Tom Savage starts just two yards shy of midfield. Quick toss to Wachaku. And Wachaku dropped for a loss on the play. Excellent tackle by James McCray, the rookie from Catawba College. McCray did an excellent open field effort to tack tackle a very speedy, easy Wachaku. He's just so elusive. And again, I like the idea of what the Texans are trying to do get the ball to their speed guys in space, whether it's a bubble screen or a wide slot sip screen. Second down 10 at the 48 yard line. Texans up 3 0. Savage over the middle to Blue. Blue with some running. He's got the first down inside the 40 yard line. Stopped at the 38 yard line. 14 yard pickup before Nick Moody could catch up with a rookie from LSU. Simple check down route. Don't need to do anything extra here. You see Blue. He's going to slip out here after the snap. Ball's in motion. He sifts out. Check it down to them. Nobody's covering him underneath. Typically, the linebackers be responsible for the back, but it's wide open. And he's open. On first down, and Blue trying to make his cut, stumbling back shy of the 40 yard line. A loss of three on the play. Every once in a while, the old turf monster will catch you. And uh, it's been, what, three and a half, four weeks of camp now? It's a long. <laughs> Need some fresh legs in there. Market in between the 40 and 41 of San Francisco. Second down and 12. The blue out wide. They're going to empty the backfield in this one. This is cool. Blue to the top of your screen on second and 12. Savage in the pocket finds Wachaku, who makes the tackle at the 35. Cannot turn up field with Chris Cook, the former Viking, on his hip. Stacks him up right there, but it leaves the Texans with a manageable third and six. Again, coverage underneath was excellent. Again, playing a loose kind of zone type look, and <laughs> Savage can find a receiver, but again, the shell coverage is there to limit the game. Our first and ten line this quarter brought to you by Yahoo. You see where the Texans need to get to get that first down. Shy of the 28-yard line. 
Third down and six. Pressure. Savage with time over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Mike Thomas, just couldn't connect with him. And now Randy Bullock will come on to try to put three on the board. Well, this is twice now that Blaine is, I mean, rather, uh, Tom was in a position, field position wise, to do something really special and couldn't get the ball in, maybe have to settle again for a long attempt here. And he's got to be frustrated more than anybody else right now, although coaches kind of chuckle at him, wondering what he, what he perhaps missed on that play. Last year, Randy Bullock's long was 51. That came against the Raiders. This from 53. Wow. Randy Bullock. Lock up the kicking job tonight. Bullock with the accuracy. Bullock with the distance, and it's good from 53 yards. Officially 52 for Bullock as it was placed between the 52 and 53. Either way, that goes down as an NFL long, and it's 6-0 Houston. He's in the barn on that one, buddy. Our scoreboard this quarter brought to you by HEB, and the scoreboard changing on the 52-yard field goal from Randy Bullock. His long last year, 51. Bullock with a 52-yarder here and a 6-0 lead for Houston. You know, Kevin, as a fifth-round draft pick, you actually expect that kind of production out of him. Again, I know that was a big, a big long attempt, but again, if you're going to spend a fifth-round draft pick on a kicker, that's got to be not the exception, but the rule for him. Boswell's kickoff. Seven yards deep, out comes Michael James. James upended at the 15-yard line by Josh Victorian. He's made some plays on special teams in this preseason. That play by Victorian keeps the Niners inside their own 20 again. It can rain, it can pour, it can snow. On first down, Blaine Gabbert to the air, and it's incomplete, looking for Bruce Ellington, the rookie from South Carolina. Bruce Ellington did a nice job of stopping, but you know, when that ball is put it on that back shoulder, you got to pivot and spin and turn real quickly and extend those arms to make that difficult catch. Blaine Gabbert trying to soothe the fears of 49ers fans that they're in good hands if something were to happen to Colin Kaepernick, and it's been an up and down preseason for the former Jacksonville Jaguar and the former first round pick. On second down, draw play. And to the 20 yard line before Jeffrey Pagan makes the tackle. Gain on the play of four for the Michael James. Well, Jeffrey Pagan did an excellent job at that zero technique. And when I'm talking about technique, the zero technique is that nose tackle position. He sits right over there by the center on the top of his nose, slightly shaded as the case may be. And he's going to be able to make a nice stop. And again, not getting pushed off the ball. Once he reads and reacts, he's able to look through the center, shed him, and then make a play on the ball carry. Third down and six at the 20 yard line. Gabbert with pressure from the backside. Gabbert throwing on the run, and the pass is caught. What a catch in traffic by Derek Carrier. He had Chris Clemens and Eddie Pleasant surrounding him, and the first down to the 40. Eight yard line of Houston. I thought the Texans actually pleasant coming from that Clemens coming from that safety position. I thought he was in an excellent position to maybe pick that ball off, but great job. So the first down into Texans territory. Gabbert to Ellington. Andre Howe with the initial contact. Max Bull finishing it off at the 46 yard line. That's a great job of Max Bullock coming in and cleaning that thing up again because you get an athletic guy like Ellington out there on an island in space and it don't matter how athletic you are as a cornerback a guy that is that gifted can make you miss. You got to have some other help coming inside and out and Bullock on that play at linebacker. Second down at seven. Alfonso Smith the running back. He gets the carry. And Smith down just shy of the 40 yard line, a key dent in there on the tackle. What you see right here happening, this is 
Coach Harbaugh doing what he does best. You know, he's an old Michigan guy. He wants to run the football and develop some character in this offensive line because it is besieged by injuries. Got several starters out, one of them holding out, Boone, who's been a big part of the success over the last three and a half, four years for this offensive. So he's going to go back to basics and try to find a way to develop an identity by running the football. And Alex Boone holding out. He'd be in there to help Daniel Kilgore adjust at center. Instead, a retooled line, third and three. Gabbert on the run, has the first down. Blake Gabbert certainly showing his elusiveness tonight. He has not struggled with the wheels, but he has struggled through the air a bit. Well, certainly 49er fans are used to seeing a mobile quarterback and Kaepernick move around, but you know, Gabbert can move, but you actually want your offense to actually work for you. So you'd like the system to do what it does best. You don't want him running the ball any more than he has to. Last year in Jacksonville, he made the first three starts through 481 yards one touchdown but seven interceptions for Blaine Gabbert and he entered last Sunday with a 17.9 passer rating that was part of the struggle for this offense Gabbert looking deep down the far sideline incomplete Pat, the intended receiver but right stride for stride with him was Marcus Williams Marcus another one of those players on the back end vying for position as well nice open field coverage technique by Williams on that play. Out of North Dakota State. That is a very competitive defensive backfield with a lot of decisions to be made for Bill O'Brien and Rick Smith in the coming days. Second down and 10. Not much room to run for Alfonso Smith. What hole there was closed quickly. Quentin Groves and Shiloh Cato in there to shut down the run of Smith. Yeah, Jeff Tarpinian was in there too, knifing in from the inside linebacker position at the wheel spot, trying to make something happen. You could see him sliding, escaping, and knifing through. It was Jeff Tarpinian in on the tackle. Third down and seven. Gabbert with some time finds his intended receiver Kasim Osgood the flag down Osgood short of the first at the 28 Andre Howe on the coverage but was there early contact on the defensive side that may give the Niners the first down yeah that's what they're going to call it it was the back judge that called it but it's holding number 38 defense five yard penalty from the previous spot automatic first down had a similar play earlier in the game of 49ers didn't get called for a similar type of defensive technique. And again, I'm not sure how you can see it from the back. It was thrown by the side judge in the far back. And, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to tell from that angle exactly what he saw. It's more like he's guessing. And Bill O'Brien <laughs> is a little bit frustrated with that call. I don't blame him. Niners will take a timeout with 2.35 remaining in this first half. San Francisco trying to get on the board before halftime. The 2014 Houston Texans running of the Bulls 5K run presented by HEB is Sunday, September 14th at NRG Park. The 5K and Toro's Kids 1K presented by Aramark have an all new route, but will still finish right here on the field of NRG Stadium. Be sure to secure your spot today before the event sells out. Visit HoustonTexans.com to register now. I heard that thing is kind of like Plampona, Spain. You know, there's a lot of folks throwing tomatoes and falling over each really? other. Really? That's what I heard. It's deadly? Yeah. That's not a that's not a way to convince people to sign up. No, there are not fun. actual bulls no. chasing you down. The bulls are the Texans, you know. It's fun stuff. I'm gonna be there. I hope for your sake that they do not unleash any <laughs> wild bulls chasing you down. After the penalty, first down and ten at the 29. Gabbert hit as he got rid of it. The pass through the hands of Alfonso Smith and incomplete. Boy, Gabbert got planted by Julius Warmsley, the rookie from Tulane. A blue wave, not a green wave. Warmsley coming off that three technique, putting pressure on Gabbert here. Nice finish through to the quarterback. He felt that one, didn't he? Mm. Arm over technique again gets the quarterback right after the release. Gabbert paid for that one, and Warmsley was all over. We'll make him hear you. Wormsley's continued to impress after coming in on a tryout in rookie minicamp. Gabbert on the keep. 
Gabbert to the sideline and inside the 25 out of bounds at the 23, a six yard run. Eddie Pleasant chasing him out. Good deception from Blaine Gabbert. Yeah, but you know what I'm looking at that and Eddie Pleasant showed a nice burst of speed that I wasn't quite sure he possessed and watching him a lot in practice. I was wondering what kind of range he would have and you know Gabbert may not be the fastest guy you want to judge that against but Pleasant just eliminated that separation pretty quickly. That's 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 encouraging to see. It's a play we saw Blaine Gabbert run obviously a little more in his Missouri days. Mm -hmm. Gary Pinkle's offense had that involved a little bit more than what they had in Jacksonville. As we've reached the two minute warning here in Houston Texans defense trying to stiffen third and three after the two minute warning with Houston leading by six. Texans with a 6 nothing lead, two minutes to play first half in Houston with Spencer Tillman. I'm Kevin Kugler, Drew Doherty with us down on the sidelines. Stay tuned for the halftime report brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Play the Houston Texans scratch-off game from the Texas Lottery. Maybe it's your lucky day. Check in at Fire Station 18 coming up at halftime as part of our halftime festivities, plus stats and highlights and conversation about what we've seen in this first half. The Texans trying to give their fans a little more excitement here in the final two minutes. The defense has so far held the Niners scoreless. Of course, San Francisco's offense has had its issues during the course of this preseason. They really have, and they've struggled to score again. Gabbert and the Niners on third and three. Smith with running room, a first down inside the 10. Eddie Pleasant on the tackle, but it's first and goal, San Francisco. Hirsch Cox did a nice job on a delay. Again, just gashing that front for the Houston Texans for plus yardage upfield. That's a nice, well executed play by the 49ers. First down and goal at the nine yard line. Kind of pace him and hurry him up here. Again, Alfonso Smith back to back carries. Smith down to the five, but a flag down back near the line of scrimmage at the 10 yard line. Tackled by Clemens. Illegal shift, number 11, number three, we're not set, prior to the snap. It's five yard penalty on the offense, still first down. Number 11, Quentin Patton, number three, Bruce Ellington. Texans, the, the 49ers were trying to pace the Texans and try to get them off tempo a little bit, and the substitution was a bit of an issue for the Texans getting on field. Harbaugh wanted to get the playoff because I think he saw the same thing we were looking at up here. He's a little bit frustrated. Back at the 14 yard line now, first down and goal. Motion from Asante Cleveland. Gabbert looking that direction. Cleveland with the catch, breaks the tackle and goes in for the touchdown. The rookie out of Miami, Asante Cleveland, has just tied it up at six. Eddie Pleasant defending on that play 35. You just got to be able to be on an island and make an independent play. Again, just got beat to Pleasant on that one. And 49ers resulting in a score. Again, the out pattern, the out cut, Pleasant getting that right hand in there. If you can't jar it out, you better sure make the tackle. Phil Dawson on for the extra point to give the Niners the lead. Andy Lee, the holder. San Francisco takes a 7 to 6 lead over Houston with a minute 18 remaining in the first half. But the end of halves have been somewhat monumental for the Texans in their games this year, whether good or bad. Things seem to happen in the final two minutes. Can Tom Savage lead the Texans to a lead before halftime? And likewise, the defense for the Texans has managed to stop people. They've not had much success since game one on this Romeo Cornell led defense in the second half. So the Texans, if they follow the course that they have so far in this preseason, they'll stiffen up in the second half. That's been their way. Texans fans were very excited after watching Tom Savage march his team to victory in Denver last week. Bill O'Brien tried to temper enthusiasm a little bit afterwards. Yeah. Some folks, a long way to go. Like we're not, we're not headed for Hawaii in the Pro Bowl now. We're talking about battling for the number two job I would say that Keenum's still two, but Tom, it's it's a it's a good tight race between two really good guys, competitive guys. 
Well, not a surprise that Tom Savage is making a move. He's a smart, talented guy. He and Case Keenum in a battle, and how would you grade it through the first half tonight? Well, I think it's a wash. I think Case, you know, came in by a narrow margin as the number two, and I think that Tom has done a good job. He's had great field position. You want to see him advance and score as a result of that field position. Um, had one unfortunate call that failed to advance a drive, and that kind of stalled him again for the second ten. But, you know, I think everybody's holding serve right now. But we're looking out for a breakout performance from one of those guys to own that number two spot. Watch a coup. Looking for a crease, not going to find it. Easy Washaku, nowhere to go. James McCray was there to make the tackle shy of the 20-yard line. Grab your smartphone right now and download the Houston Texans mobile app. This app is a must-have for every Texans fan. You can listen to Texans radio live and on the go, plus enjoy access to videos, articles, photos, and more. Text Texans to 51288 to download today. Anywhere you go, you can take the dulcet tones of Mark Vandenberg, <laughs> That's right. Andre Ware. Follow the Texans home and away. Here's Case Keenum now with a chance to work in the two-minute offense. Two timeouts to work with from the 19. Starts it short to Grimes. Grimes out to the 30-yard line. 11-yard pickup. Chris Borland on the tackle. And one of the two timeouts the Texans have left will be used by Bill O'Brien with 101 to go before halftime. It's an interesting call because, you know, this is what Case does well. I mean, he excels when you're in a pace offense. If you're going to work the ball to the perimeter here, checking it down to Grimes on a nice little check down route, that's what Case thrives at. He'll push the ball upfield for you, but I want him to pace it. I want him to do what he does best, and that's what effective coaching really is. It's about understanding what your guys do best and facilitating that for them real time. Watching Jonathan Grimes, it's a reminder that when he gets into space, he's fun to watch. He is shifty, has really that is. elusiveness, and has that little burst of speed at the end to get a little extra yardage. You know, Kevin, he's a very intelligent runner, smart runner. Sometimes in this league, you have defenders that can run as fast as some running backs. Sometimes it's not always wise to be the fastest. You've got to run in a judicious way. Just be smart. At the 30-yard line on first down, 101 to go first half. Texans down one. Four-man rush for the 49ers. Hit as he throws, and that one came out wobbly. The pressure from the backside coming in to Chase Thomas, whose name we've called a lot tonight, got to Keenum just as he got rid of that football. They're going to try to pace it up now a little bit, or are they going to try to huddle up? Yeah, the pressure came from the offside, and again, I'm not so sure if Case had anywhere to escape because the pocket was collapsing all around him on that play. Thomas getting past Xavier Suofilo. That left tackle tonight. Seen him at both guard spots. Now at tackle. Pressure coming on second down. Keenum floats it out and it's intercepted by Chris Cook. Cook with the interception. Cook inside the 30. Cook dancing out of bounds inside the 15 yard line. Chris Cook, who's never had an interception in his NFL career in a regular season game, gets one here late in the first half in the final preseason game. Well, they had a little pressure look, safety coming from the outside. The Texans pick it up, but again, in that particular play, Cook did a nice job of settling. The receiver posing, turns the opposite direction. Cook there to pluck it out of the air and head up field. And uh, looked like there was a little bit of miscommunication on the route and in the pass by Posey and Keenum. Now Josh Johnson in at quarterback for the first time tonight for San Francisco. So Josh Johnson, sixth year man out of San Diego, played for Jim Harbaugh at San Diego. Former Tampa Bay Buccaneer, former Cincinnati Bengal, former Cleveland Brown. First down and 10. Johnson. Open receiver down the sideline, diving for the pylon. Ellington touchdown. Talking about making quick and short order of the completion there, and it comes on the heels of an interception, and that's really difficult if you're trying to vie for, or nail down, as is the case here, the number two quarterback spot. Case Keenum's interception directly leading to points, and that's problematic for 
one of Houston's most storied and the NCAA's all time leading passer, Case Keenum. Phil Dawson on for the extra point. The final two minutes of halves have been important for the Texans all preseason. We saw it in the first half last week in Denver. It was important in a bad way for the Texans. And once again, Houston with a touchdown allowed in the final minute and change here in this one. Stay tuned. Our halftime report brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Play the Houston Texans scratch-off game from the Texas Lottery. Maybe it's your lucky day. Stick around at halftime. And as we move into the second half, a reminder that Houston Texans GM Rick Smith will be huddled up with that man over the next couple of days trying to decide what to do with this roster. We'll try to get some insight from the general manager coming up in the second half. He'll join us here in the third quarter. Well, it's an unenviable position to be in where you've got guys who are, and this will be the last time they'll step foot on the NFL fields for many of them. And some of them will leverage their opportunity here tonight to land with another team. And this is an open audition as a very real sense. But, you know, got 31 other teams in the league that will see this tape tonight. And if you flash like Shiloh Kale, for example, has three consecutive plays on special teams, making a couple of open field tackles. The opposition is sure to see that play. Victoria made another great play on special team, so that's always the way I approach preseason. Now with expanded practice squads around the league, a couple of extra jobs for each team. Yeah, moving from eight to ten, and that'll be an opportunity. Easy watch a coup from the goal line. And watch a coup down at the 16 yard line and another tackle on special teams made by James McCray. James McCray really knifed in there and you saw the flash of speed by watching you on that return but McCray nailed him down in the hurry before he got a chance to get on plane. Penalty on the play against the 49ers. Five yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the run. First down. So an extra five yards for the Texans to use but one timeout for Houston, and they'll start at the 22 yard line. 21 yard line, rather, is where they mark it. And that's where Case Keenum and the Texans will go to work once more. You know, Case is a very smart individual, and he's not a quitter. He's going to come back and fight and try to correct the wrong, and he may have to do it in the second half here, but uh, the bottom line is after talking to him and being around him for years now, one thing there is no quit in case King. This was respotted the ball, so back to the 22 yard line goes. And on the draw play, Grimes looking for any kind of running room he can find. Gets a couple to the 24 yard line. Shane Scove, the Stanford rookie, on the tackle. Second down at seven at the 25. Grimes again. Nowhere to run to the outside. Aaron Lynch, who had three tackles and a sack for the Niners last week, ends the first half with a tackle of Grimes behind the line of scrimmage. And halftime is here with the San Francisco 49ers leading the Houston Texans 14 to 6. The difficult thing is we've seen, you know, there's always ebb and flow in the course of a game. And in this particular game, it's been a lot of negatives happening for the Houston Texans and again they've got to get it corrected in the second half. So the Texans will make their way into the locker room make their adjustments. And see what happens in this second half on their way out. Our coach O'Brien interview is brought to you by Yahoo. Let's go down to Drew Doherty who's standing by with the coach. All right coach what were your initial impressions of quarterback play in the first half. Not very good. Not very good. Got to get a lot better. What do you want to see Tom Savage build upon in the second. Not throw interceptions and uh, try to move the ball. All right, Coach, thanks so much. Guys? All right, Drew, thank you very much. Short and to the point, Bill O'Brien and the Texans trailing 14 to 6 at halftime to the San Francisco 49ers. The final preseason game will continue in a moment on Texans TV. Our power stats brought to you by Reliant and what you don't see on the power stats, you see the numbers in favor of the Texans. 
in the passing game, but you don't see the turnover. That was pretty significant. Turnovers are significant, and one of the reasons why we saw the look on Coach Bill O'Brien's face is he knows 87% of the time, if you're trailing in the turnover category, at the end of four quarters, you're going to be on the losing end. So when you see coaches get upset about that, there's a reason for it. Nobody likes turnovers. No. Fourth preseason games are generally about opportunity. One guy who's taken advantage of his opportunity tonight, Shiloh Kay. That's right, and Kevin, one of the things that's exciting is he plays special teams the way they're supposed to be, with leverage, taking one upfield shoulder away from him, and the return man has one way to go, and hopefully your battery mates on the opposite side are doing the same thing. Shiloh Kay understands it. He's been here going on three years now. This will be his fourth season. He's on the bubble. He knows he has to make a play to stay on this team. And how did he make his mark initially on special teams? He was the special teams captain in 2012. He knows how to play special teams, a very valuable part of what the Texans are looking for in that defensive backfield. We'll talk more about that with Rick Smith coming up later on in this third quarter. That's right, and one of the difficult truths about the game of football is, you know, coaches like players for different reasons, and everybody knows that Wade Phillips saw him at the Senior Bowl, and he was one of his guys, and really had developed an affinity for him. So he wants to kind of break out of that mold and say, look, I can play irrespective of who brought me here. The bottom line is I'm a ball player, and he's shown it tonight. Well, let's kick off from the goal line, LaMichael James who's handled the return game tonight for the 49ers, just sneaks it across the 20-yard line. Andre Howe in there to make the tackle. Again, we're seeing those reoccurring themes. Andre Howe, Shiloh Keo, Victorian. Those names are going to continue to come up because those, that's the game inside of the game that's transparent right before our eyes. These guys are desperate for an opportunity to be on an NFL roster. First and 10 line this quarter is brought to you by Royal Purple. It'll be Josh Johnson at quarterback. We saw him come in late in the first half through a touchdown pass, and now Johnson back out there to start off the second half for the 49ers. Play action. Johnson, Smith, and Alfonso Smith close to the first down at the 31-yard line. Harbaugh came out in the old two-back set. It was the old stuff that Bill Walsh used to run it. Like the right formation, determine the strength as a tight end, and they came out and just ran a misdirection play and had great success to start things off. How many times did you run that two back set in a San Francisco 49er uniform? A lot of times. <laughs> Roger Craig and Tom Rathman and your Nebraska Cornhuskers. Both of them. That's former right. Huskers. That's right. That was an enemy territory. <laughs> you really were. I don't know how you made it. <laughs> Running room to the right side for Alfonso Smith. Jeffrey Pagan, who's shown a couple of things tonight, makes the tackle. First down, though, for the San Francisco 49ers at the 35-yard line. Last half of football in the preseason, and the last half for a lot of these guys to state their case and say, I deserve a spot on this roster. Yeah, I call it the element of recency. What you see last, you tend to remember most. This is their moment. Again, Smith with the carry and not much running room this time. There's Jeffrey Pagan again, the rookie out of Alabama. Comes in and makes a good, strong tackle. Again, Nick Saban known for producing guys who are strong at the point of attack in the interior of the line. And again, there's nothing timid about being inside that space right there. You've got to be able to be physical, have violent hands, and be able to make a tackle when you can. Second down and nine. Sixth round pick Jeffrey Pagan. Couple of back to back tackles. Al Nelson, the motion man, play action for Johnson. Throws it short to Smith. Alfonso Smith trying to turn the corner. And he's caught right near the sticks by Whitney Merciless. Well, I tell you, Whit Whitney Merciless shows some of the the speed and the bursts and the smarts to close like he did in that one stellar junior year he had for the Illini. He really closed with intelligence. A lot of time when a guy that big gets going in one direction, he really can't change. But in real time, Whitney kind of shifted his weight and got upfield and saved what could have been a very significant play. Third down and one. Cleveland in the backfield, Glenn Winston the tailback. On third and one, Winston the carry. Winston's got the first down out to the 48-yard line. 
the 6'1", 220-pound rookie banging his way forward for the first down. We've been looking at linebackers all night long. There's some opportunity here for some of these guys to make this squad. Well, this 3-4 scheme is set up for the guys on the outside to be the stars. Jadavian Clowney playing at that jack position, chief among them. Of course, Whitney Merciless, if he gets in there like he has recently, he's got the athleticism to make plays. Inside, we know Jeff Tarpinian. We talked about him at the top of the show, along with Mike Muhammad are competing inside. First down and 10 at the 48-yard line. Johnson off play action to the outside where he finds Bruce Ellington. And Ellington's had a busy night tonight. Ellington down to the 33-yard line. Elbert Mack able to ride him out there, but a good gain on the play of 18 yards and a first down. That's a big-time play action pass and a big-time NFL throw there, the deep out with touch. Not very many guys can throw that, particularly to the boundary or the wide side of the field. Josh just shows you he's got a big arm, too. At the 33-yard line, Winston through a hole. Winston powering forward inside the 25 and down to the 24-yard line. Nine-yard gain for Glenn Winston, who led this team with 58 yards rushing a week ago. He's that big back that they don't really have. They think he's got a shot to make this team. Well, that's big boy football right there. When you look at Frank Gore, who's in his 10th year, they're going to need a reprieve. They're going to need other people that can come in and be physical and get plus yardage in those situations. That's that's big time, big boy football we just saw there. A couple of big backs with Carlos Hyde also on the roster right now. Second and one, Johnson off the straight drop, going to run. He's got the first down. Johnson inside the 15 yard line to the 14 a 10 yard scramble Shiloh Ko covers him up but Josh Johnson moving the chains once more it's the advantage of having a mobile quarterback you have to respect his arm and just a four man rush here by the Texans and again by the time they get back in coverage those big nose tackles because it's a three four don't move as well particularly when the quarterback releases to the middle of the field and wears him out in a hurry. First down at 10. Winston again to the right side and he gets nearly five down to the 10 yard line. Keith Browner on the tackle for the Houston Texans. And Glenn Winston's an interesting guy, Spencer. He started at Michigan State, ran into some trouble with the law, had to leave Michigan State, ended up at Northwood, and has been impressive for the Niners. Again, he's been part of this drive that's been so physical. At some point in time, the Houston Texans have got to understand that this is what Jim Harbaugh likes to do. They have got to have a response to this. Second and five, Johnson. And a good tackle by Shiloh Ko showing once more. Ko read that one from the beginning and nowhere to go but down for Kyle Nelson. You know when a player is playing aggressively with his intention, it looks like he's shot out of a cannon. An open space, Shiloh Ko closing like he has more corner type technique and skill sets in that particular place as opposed to a safety. And I'll tell you, he's playing like he's held in for election, and that's that's good heads up play by Shiloh Ko. Third down and five at the ten. Texans defense trying to stiffen here in the red zone. Johnson on third down, incomplete. Off the hands of Lance Lewis, and it's fourth down. Well, we know it inherently gets difficult to score once you get into the red zone, but one thing about this 3-4 scheme, particularly under Romeo Cornell, it tends to bend, but it does not break. Doesn't give up a lot of touchdowns, and we're seeing that manifest right now on what looked like before a drive that was certainly going to produce at least three points and perhaps a touchdown. But again, the Texans hold as Romeo Cornell's 3-4 successful. 28-yard field goal try for Phil Dawson. And the kick by Dawson is good. He was 32 for 36 a year ago. Dawson puts three more on the board. Niners by 11. The scoreboard this quarter brought to you by your Houston area Mazda dealers. The 49ers with a 17 to 6 lead on that scoreboard with 904 remaining in third Texans defense able to stiffen inside the red zone and hold San Francisco to that field goal attempt. Yeah, and part of the reason why they're able to stiffen Bill Kolar right there the defensive line coach is one of the best in the business. He's been doing it a long time and uh, it's about as good as it gets right there. Let me tell you he's a holdover from last year's group of course. And there's a reason why he's here. He's simply the best. Easy watch a coup from the two yard line. 
Wachiku trying to get to the outside and turn on the Jets. Wachiku across the 30-yard line. A little spark from Easy Wachiku down at the 32 in the arms of Daryl Morris. And Easy Wachiku gives the Texans good field position when we return. Tom Savage and the Texans first and 10 at the 32-yard line. And it's intercepted. Taking it down inside the 10 to the 5. And Borland is going to be in for the touchdown. The rookie from Wisconsin, Chris Borland, takes it to the house. And the Niners have a 23-6 lead. Well, that's certainly not going to make Bill O'Brien happy. The last thing he told our Drew Daughtery that he cannot make interceptions or turnovers. And that's exactly what happened. Got a little bit lazy on the out cut there. You've got to deliver that one with a laser. Man coverage. No excuse for that one. That was just a bad execution on that play. And Bill O'Brien not happy with some of the execution tonight in this fourth preseason game. It's a learning process when you're a fourth round pick. And the rookie has just learned a tough lesson here tonight. Extra point is up and good. And it's a 24 to 6 lead for the San Francisco 49ers. 845 to play in the third. Eight forty-five to play third quarter. 49ers 24, Texans 6. Final preseason game for everybody. For the Houston Texans, that means our guest really has to go to work. Rick Smith, the general manager of the Houston Texans. You guys have some work and some decisions to make over the next few days. We do, but what you try to do is construct a roster that forces you to have to have to make those decisions. And so we, uh, we've got a lot of work to do out here tonight. But uh, I'll tell you what, it's, it's been a good preseason. I think we've gotten better over the last couple of weeks, and, uh, and I'm excited about the season. Rick, everybody has to make adjustments. I'm curious, from regime to regime, what adjustments have you had to make as a GM and working with a new head coach and a different approach, perhaps? Well, I tell you, I mean, immediately when the season started, we had to sit down and, and talk about the different schemes that we were going to employ both offensively and defensively and so we were able to do that I thought we educated our scouts well they understood and I thought we had a productive draft I think as a, as a regular season will approach I think we'll do the same thing you'll see us continuing to churn this roster to get it as, as good as we can get it when you're evaluating players you the coaching staff everybody huddles together did it help you guys evaluate what you had with the practices against the Falcons and the Broncos the last couple of weeks it really did you can't simulate that type of competitiveness in the practice with your you know with your own team and so if the, the ability for us to go against two really good football teams in Atlanta and Denver really helped us did that represent kind of a paradigm shift in the way things will be done moving forward I'm just Curious. No, not necessarily. We had done that before. We just hadn't done it recently, but we had practiced against other teams, and I tell you what, the benefit was just really, really exponential. So just see us do it again. I want to get back to this never ending improvement process that you go through. You talked about the constant churning, getting new talent in there. That's something that is the difficult truth of this business. It is a zero sum proposition. Kind of give us a sense of what that's like. Well, it's 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 a constant um, evaluation of you know you got a pro department you've got a college department you've got various people out looking for the for the talent and so we we actually have employed our college scouts into the process this year because we've got that first claiming priority yes. and how important that is for us to make sure that you know we're, we're looking for the best 53 that we have on this roster but after that's over if there are opportunities for us to improve our football team via the waiver wire then we will absolutely do so Texans mm -hmm. general manager Rick Smith is our guest here in this third quarter we talk about it in this broadcast the fourth preseason game a chance for somebody to make one more good impression mm -hmm. is it as simple as that can a guy come out have a huge fourth preseason game and do enough to make a roster well absolutely and it's a comprehensive evaluation of course and so we're not making a decision just based solely on what's going on tonight but but you can absolutely you know you know, make a mark tonight in a game like this pass incomplete from looking for Travis Labhart it is fourth down 732 remaining in the third the Texans We'll have to punt it away, trailing 24 to 6. You've got a lot of decisions I know to make. Coach O'Brien has talked about the level of competitiveness throughout this roster on both sides of the football. This is not going to be an easy process over the next few days. No, it's not. But again, that's that's the goal. When you when you assume, you know, when you get 80 guys on a roster, you want to make sure that when it's time to cut down to 75, it's difficult. When it's time to cut down to 53, it's difficult again. And then who we, we decide, some of these young players, you just saw Travis there. 
you got a ton of young players. Who do you want back on the practice squad to continue to try to develop uh, guys that may not necessarily be ready yet, but they have some some potential to you know to develop into a pro football player. Rick's going to stick around with us midway through this third quarter, 24-6, San Francisco. Bill O'Brien's troops down 24-6, the final preseason game of 2014, 49ers 24, Texans 6 alongside Spencer Tillman. I'm Kevin Kugler, Rick Smith, the general manager of the Houston Texans, kind enough to spend some time with us in this third quarter. We know August 30th at 5 p.m. Central Time is the deadline for you guys. But what is the process over the next couple of days before you get to that cut-down deadline? Well, we'll actually make uh, most of the releases probably tomorrow, and so that will give us, as will most other clubs, and so that will give us actually some extra time you know to anticipate what the waiver wire will look like and so you know that that actual time is going to come down on that Saturday afternoon and then from that time you've got uh, until 12 o'clock on noon on Sunday to decide if you want to claim a, 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 a contract or not and so we'll spend that time evaluating those players that are on the waiver wire and like I said before if there's an opportunity for us to you know to improve the roster then we'll, we'll do it. Rick, to the extent that you can, after this play, kind of unpack a little bit of the process of when you have, for example, three tight ends or perhaps four tight ends that are doing extremely well, how that impacts the numbers that maybe at a wide receiver position. The kick five, keep six. Do the coaches get involved in that and kind of lobby for their guys that they think they have a chance to make it? Well, they do. And, and, and really what ends up happening is the discussion really revolves most times around special teams. And if there's an opportunity for us to to maybe keep an extra defensive back or an extra linebacker versus a, a fourth tight end, if he's a better special teams player, you want more speed on the field. And so maybe you keep six wideouts instead of five if you've got a good wide receiver that's a return guy or a cover guy. And so all those decisions and all those conversations are, are, are what we're going to have, you know, have to do over the next couple of days to make sure that we, you know, we, we are as strong as we can be. Third down and a yard. The give to the fullback. That's Smith who gets the first down. Rick Smith is our guest, the general manager of the Houston Texans. It sounds like a small window between the time cuts are made and the time you have to announce any waiver claims at noon on Sunday. What is the process to evaluate those players on the waiver wire? Is there just a room filled with tape that you have to watch on any potential cuts that might come down the pike? Well, we're a little bit more organized. <laughs> <laughs> this is a digital age. Yeah, right? we, we've got a. Actually, we've already uh, we've got our pro scouts and college scouts out, and we have uh, you know studied you know all the 30 other team, uh, teams rosters. Uh, in anticipation for what we think the, the the cut down list will look like, and so we've already done, you know, a lot of work on those players that we think might be released. And so, uh, at, at the point when it's done and actually there, then, then, then it's a function of really sitting down and saying, okay, these are the guys that are actually available. How do they impact our team? You know, one of the other things, Spencer, that we look for when you're talking about, do I keep the fourth tight end or the six wide receiver? Is the versatility? Maybe it's an extra offensive tackle because he can play some tight end for you in short yardage. Mm -hmm. On second down, a little bit of running room, but not much. Texans closing quickly after a three-yard pickup. So when you're looking at individual positions, say you know the top three at a position, is it a special teams role that separates one guy from the next? What is it that you look for to discern between this guy or that guy who both play the same position? Well, you, you're looking for impact. I mean, we always talk about impact players, whether you're talking about on offense or a guy that can make plays with the ball in his hands or defensively, uh, you know, guys that can impact the game by not making plays on the football. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's an evaluation that obviously starts on, on either side of the football, whether it's an offensive or defensive player, and then the special teams piece does factor into it. But really, the bulk of the evaluation is what can the guy do on, on offensive defense, really. Good play by Eddie Pleasant there to hold Kyle Nelson short of the first down by a yard here. Texas had a nice little starboard charge to the right side, creating some unusual pressure. Got it out in a man situation, but again, Great job of closing on that by Pleasant. Fourth down. And a short two, long one. The Niners are going to go for it. Tailback is Glenn Winston. Play action. Johnson on the bootleg, and he just slipped away from Quentin Groves and got the first down. Groves had it red. Johnson 
a little bit elusive, able to slip free and get the first to the 33. You know, Quentin has made some pretty good plays, excellent plays, in fact, in this preseason. But when you find yourself on an island out there, the exceptional players make those plays in open field. Josh is a very athletic quarterback. We've seen that tonight and, of course, over his career. But I think ultimately, Romeo Cornell is looking for that exceptional guy who can make plays in open space against very athletic quarterbacks. Our first and ten line this quarter is brought to you by Royal Purple. Toss to Smith. And a good tackle by Shiloh Kao, a guy whose name we have called an awful lot. Shiloh Kao is a great example, Rick, of a guy who made an impact early in his career. In fact, made a name for himself as a special teams guy, an example to a lot of guys who are trying to do the same thing. Without a doubt. I mean, that's that's the, the plight of a lot of young players in this league that, that don't get the opportunity immediately to play on, on either side of the ball. They've got to make an impact on teams, and he certainly has done that. Second down and five at the 28. Johnson. That's deflected and intercepted. Picked up by Andre Howe. And he's off to the races. Howe trying to outrun Johnson. He'll do it. Touchdown, Texans. Great play on the ball. Little life injected into NRG Stadium thanks to the seventh round pick out of Vanderbilt, Andre Howe. Smart players are 10 Vanderbilt. <laughs> a great job of reacting and sitting on that one and reading and reacting and plucking that out of the air and heads to the house. That's twice in the preseason. Andre Howe has made an impact play, and that's exactly what you're talking about a minute ago. General Manager Rick Smith, the impact players, the one that makes a difference, and this is a game changer. That's good stuff there, bro. Bullock on for the extra point. It is good. And the Texans now within 11. Andre Howe with a flag down at the end of that extra point. Andre Howe's going to, he's not letting that football go. That's my football. <laughs> it's good to see the young man make some plays. I mean, obviously, you mentioned that's the second time he's, he's picked the ball off. And that's what you, you look for Holy guys that can make plays on the ball. Offense, 10 yard penalty will retry from the 12 yard line. So another opportunity for another extra point. Andre Howell's one of those very intriguing late draft picks. Seventh round pick in this 2014 draft, but a guy who in the preseason has showed himself to maybe start wandering into that steel territory a little <laughs> bit, some of the plays he's made. And I'd like to hear our general manager talk about the impact of playing in a culture. James Franklin fostered that environment where the expectation to win and perform was at a high level. It makes a difference. It, it really does. I mean, and, and you look for those things in the evaluation process as, as well as leadership qualities. I've got, you know, we, we like captains. We like men that, that have, have led on their football teams. We like guys that come from winning programs. And certainly when you talk about that particular program and what what Coach Franklin you know, did when he was there, it really changed the culture. And, and so you're looking for those kind of players and impact on you in your program as well. Rick Smith, Texans general manager. Get back into that room filled with film. You got work to do. <laughs> Thanks so much for stopping up. No problem. Our scoreboard this quarter. Our scoreboard this quarter is brought to you by your Houston area Mazda dealers, 24-13. 49ers with the lead over the Texans. Texans have 13 because of that man, Andre Howe. And there's his numbers in his career at Vanderbilt. Rick Smith wouldn't commit, but I'll ask you, Spencer Tillman, is he in the steel territory at this point, seventh zoom, round pick? Zoom, zoom. <laughs> I love him, man. I mean, that's, uh, he's a tremendous talent. I, I like the intention that he plays with. I say he's in steel territory, to be sure. From one yard deep, Ellington on his way out. And Ellington across the 20, stumbles short of the 25-yard line. Jay Prosh in there on the tackle. Watch for the Yahoo Sports Fantasy Football standout to be announced in our final quarter. It's your chance to win four Houston Texans VIP tickets to a regular season game. Stay tuned to win and start a league today at yahoo.com slash fantasy football. I got into a conversation this morning with a gentleman who was driving an armored car. I happened to <laughs> wander into a local pastry shop and struck up a conversation with him about fantasy football. He was fired up about his team. Everybody is ready for football to get underway. <laughs> up 
the middle, Glenn Winston. He was very pleased with his Peyton Manning selection. After watching Peyton Manning take on the Texans last week, he said, I feel pretty good about my pick. Yeah, I can't let you get away from that, though. He was driving a tank? Not a tank, an armored car. Armored car, okay. Yeah, not a tank. All right. If armored you've been driving a tank, I'm not sure I'm talking to that guy. Uh, where I come from, you tell me somebody's driving an armored <laughs> car in Hell, Tulsa, Oklahoma, I got a different <laughs> understanding of what that means, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, pardon. <laughs> Second down at eight. Johnson with time. Now Chase, nobody open downfield, and Johnson shoved out of bounds by Jeffrey Pagan. That's a pretty good speed by the big man to get to the edge against a very nimble quarterback in Josh Johnson. Again, we saw Pagan demonstrate some of that speed earlier tonight. Again, I'm watching most of these activities taken away from the play, and it may not be at the point of the tackle where the action is happening with the ball, but these guys are running and chasing big time in the interior. You can see Pagan right here. He's going to get out of that mess, and when the flow comes back his way, watch him redirect the big guy out in space to push the quarterback out of bounds. He's moving, man. He needs water. He may need oxygen. <laughs> Third down and four. Johnson on the lob to the sideline, incomplete. Marcus Williams out there going to work against LaDamian Washington, the rookie from Missouri. Pass a little overthrown, and it's fourth down. Marcus Williams with brilliant coverage, understanding where he is in relationship to the sideline. The sideline is his friend right here. Again, you don't have to get too touchy and handsy on the sideline. Just locate the ball, and as he does, looks up in the air, Williams does, and then finds it. Ball's thrown out of bounds. That's great defensive work by Marcus Williams. A couple of nice plays tonight from the rookie out of North Dakota State. Andy Lee getting ready to punt. Hang time of plenty. Labhart calls for the fair catch and makes it just inside the 20 yard line. With that fair catch, as Tom Savage comes on the field, we've got a moment to show you more home tailgating photos emailed from our fans. I love it. Oh, to fan picks at HoustonTexans.com. Show off your Houston Texans pride for a chance to appear on the broadcast. Keep sending your photos to fan picks at HoustonTexans.com. Everybody anxious and excited for September 7th to get here, get the Texan season underway. <laughs> He's especially excited. That's a 10 gallon hat if I've ever seen one, man. <laughs> On his little head, maybe about a 20 gallon hat. <laughs> From the 19 yard line, first down. Trying to find some running room, Tobin O'Purum. O'Purum step into the outside. The big man rumbling forward before Daryl Morris could trip him up. Big guy body, little guy feet, huh? Stepping through there. Find a little nice little boy. Out to the 25, a six yard pickup for Tobin Opurum, who was an outside linebacker his final year at Kansas, but he began as a Jayhawk at the running back spot. Getting a chance to relive the college days here as the running back. Opurum again in some trouble this time, and Tobin Opurum nowhere to go. Mike Purcell in there to make the stop. We have reached the end of the third quarter here in Houston with our score, San Francisco 24, Houston 13. Texans TV will continue from Houston after these messages. The Texans are about to march. Third down and five Texans, two for eight on third down tonight. Savage starts off the fourth quarter on the roll. Ronnie Brown with the catch. He's going to be stopped just short by Shane Scove, a yard away from the first down. Nine-year veteran, Ronnie Brown, getting some action there, catching it out. And he's another one of those guys. He's not a rookie or a second or third-year player, but the way you figure things with Blue coming around, that he'll perhaps not make this team, but he's not ready to give up just yet. He's trying to find a job as well. Chris Boswell ready to punt. Back-to-back -back weeks that he's handled all of the punting duties. Boswell short punt to Ellington takes a good roll though Ellington off the bounce reversing his field Ellington with a crease Ellington down the sideline and Boswell able to shove him out of bounds just shy of the 30 yard line wonderful return by the rookie from South Carolina Bruce Ellington.
Yeah, coverage awareness on special teams is something that's extremely important because it doesn't take a whole lot for the integrity to come down. All of a sudden, when you start to see guys trailing, falling color, if you see four or five guys in the same colored uniform in a relatively small space, that means that there's a wide open a gap or responsibility that's been voided. And the returner does a great job of making his way back. Boswell did a good job of pinning the ball in the corner, but again, you got to cover with integrity. First down, Winston to the outside. Winston upended by Shiloh Kea. Dramatic tackle there at the 23 yard line, but a seven yard gain for Glenn Winston. Number 31 takes down number 31. Shiloh Kayo playing with intentionality today. Again, that's the fifth tackle that he's made like that. Two of them on special teams make it three and then two open field from his safety position. Second down and three. Winston again blown up in the backfield. Great penetration from Jason Ankra who blew through the block and blew up Glenn Winston. Talking about reading, reacting. Anchor does a nice job of settling in and just ripping through the outside push of the tight end who was washed down and Anchor just works through the block, through the fullback Cleveland trying to block him. And I tell you, that's that's a big time play right there. How difficult is the transition Jason Anchor is trying to move from defensive end in college back to linebacker? Well, it should be bigger because he's usually going to be a little bit bigger at the linebacker position he had if he had the capability of playing defensive end. So when he gets to the point of attack he's going to be heavy. Third down and seven. Johnson flushed again. Johnson caught from behind by Quinton Groves short of a Niner first down at the 21 yard line. He needed to get it just across the 20 yard line. A yard shy and it's fourth down. You know, Kevin, you make a great point about matchups. That's what it's all about. Sometimes at the collegiate level in particular there's a guy that may be a little bit too big to play safety and then they'll or corner rather and then they'll move him to safety because he'll be far more athletic as a safety than he would be at a corner. And yet when you look at matchups from an offensive standpoint you may put a tight end on him. But you know what an athletic safety can cover. A couple of years ago the Texans had two outstanding safeties. Grover Quinn and Manny, Manny. Fourth down and one Nelson the tight end in motion. Johnson quick toss to the outside and the first down Lewis with the catch. Marcus Williams on the tackle but the Niners move the chains. Marcus Williams again and on all of the defensive backs for the Texans today have been doing a great job particularly when in man coverage of working through a guy and putting your body through him once you got your hands wrapped around him affecting his ability to get upfield and make extra yards. That's just a great job of fundamental tackling there by Williams. 49ers have converted on both of their fourth down conversions now tonight. First and 10 at the 17. Same play opposite side. Lewis spinning through two tackles and Lewis down to the nine yard line. Shiloh Keo had a shot at him and he slipped through that tackle. Chris Young came over to finish it off. They had him in a technique what we call banjo where you're playing him inside and out and yet he's able to break through all of it. And Lewis made a tremendous play getting past two guys who had him dead to rights as far as leverage was concerned. But that's the difference between a player who's going to settle for the positive yardage and one can get extra five yardage as a result of his athleticism. Second down and two. 10.58 to play. Again the carry up the middle for Glenn Winston and you see the power of Winston as he pushes forward to get the first down to the five yard line. That's one of the things that intrigues the Niners about this rookie from Northwood is that power that Glenn Winston brings to the run game. And you can see he's built more like you know a classic running back. You know I'm talking about from the 90s and, and into the early 2000s but his, he's bigger he's heavier. And it, he can be deceptive. You know, the guy runs with tremendous leverage and, as you pointed out, tremendous power. First down and goal at the five yard line. Niners trying to take advantage of the good return by Ellington to get into the end zone. Johnson throwing off his heels. It's caught by Nelson for the touchdown. Kyle Nelson taking it in for six, and it's 30 to 13, San Francisco. Play action away is very, very deceptive. Josh does a great job of selling it. And again, the Texans out of position, can't make a play there. Starling just got beat on that one and found himself out of position. Always got to stay home and protect the backside, particularly a play action away from him. Full 
Dawson on for the extra point. And with 10-14 to go, San Francisco extends the lead to 31 to 13. Bill O'Brien's troops down big with 10-14 to go. 31-13, 49ers, 10-14 to play in the fourth quarter. Our scoreboard this quarter brought to you by Papa John's. And Bill O'Brien, it's the fourth preseason game, and in the end, nobody's going to remember who won or who lost this game. But in talking with Coach O'Brien yesterday, he certainly was somebody who was not, shall you say, interested in losing this game. Bill O'Brien didn't want to lose. It's a preseason game, but he had no interest in seeing an L even in the preseason. Well, I think, again, because he understands how confident this is born, and this, again, is a reoccurring theme that we'll be talking about, not just now, but into the regular season. This team is still young. He talked about it being kind of thin in the middle. Frontline guys are ready to play for the most part. But in that middle, you still got to continue to develop players. And where that confidence to develop comes from is through demonstrated performance out here on the field. So, and that comes by winning. See Wachaku, eight yards deep, out he comes. Wachaku with a bit of a crease, but he's tripped up as he came through that crease. Kasim Osgood, who's made his living on special teams over the years, comes up to make the stop. Tom Savage back to work when we return. Forty Niners thirty one Texans thirteen ten oh nine to play in the fourth quarter time for our power stats brought to you by Reliant and on a night in which we were looking to see which quarterback might take advantage of the fourth game opportunity. Both have played even unfortunately probably not the even either one would like to play. Yeah the difficult truth is these are nondescript numbers and again both of them are going to continue to to identify themselves and somebody has to step up and give the confidence that they can be the number two if needed. Pass tipped at the line of scrimmage and incomplete. Chris Borland got his hands on that one and deflected it. It'll be second down. Case Keenum is certainly not going to give up. He's going to have an opportunity to get back in, perhaps, and uh, define his place in this in this match. It's Aaron Lynch who got his hands on that, not Borland. Borland had the interception return for a touchdown earlier. Aaron Lynch, the rookie out of South Florida, with that deflection. First and ten line this quarter brought to you by First Community Credit Union. Savage, good catch by Labhart. Labhart shrugging off the hit and falling forward for an extra yard or two. Kenneth Acker on the tackle. Five man rush. By definition, that's a blitz. The Texans pick it up, get 54 inside linebacker, and again, you see. Nine year veteran Ronnie Brown stepping up in there, sticking his nose in there to get the extra blitzer. The quarterback does a great job of delivering under pressure. So down and one. Single back is Ronnie Brown. Brown gets the carry and nowhere to go. The minute he got that football, he looked up and there were Niners everywhere. Nick Moody, the first to make contact. You know, sometimes offensive linemen can key the fact that they're going to pull when they get their rear and set off the line of scrimmage and the little counter motion by Ronnie. That little hesitation is a timing move. But when you have penetration, a good defensive lineman knows when that guard is sitting back on his heels and he's getting ready to move and he can be more aggressive. And that's where you get penetration in a disrupted play. Boswell punting once more. Gets blocked through the back end of the end zone by Kasim Osgood. We told you about Kasim Osgood and his special teams prowess. A safety for the Niners makes it 33 to 13. Alfonso Smith also in there. Talk about almost textbook. The only thing could have been better about that from Afonso Smith's perspective is if he reached out and took it off the foot. He goes airborne instead. Still, the result is the same a safety. No excuse for him coming off the edge and not being blocked. Kasim Osgood's a three time Pro Bowler as a special teams player. His best year was a 15 catch year in 2004 when he was with the Chargers. He's been with Detroit, Jacksonville, 
Also, San Diego is his second year in San Francisco, and he's made it 12 years in this league because of the ability to make an impact on special teams like he did just there. You know, historically, there are guys, and I'm going to back a few years on here. Everybody remembers the e excellent play of Buffalo Bills had an outstanding guy, Tasker, mm -hmm. who was the same way, although he stayed all those years with the Buffalo Bills. But Steve Tasker was an outstanding special teams guy, made a career of it. They had unbelievable wide receivers, but again, you can play a long time in this league if you can make those types of plays. Steve's still in the Buffalo area after yes, his retirement. One of your colleagues at CBS, I believe. Yes, he is. We have, used to have some knockdown, drag out battles. <laughs> but you, you learn to respect guys like that, a little bit undersized, who are always in a desperate mode to try to make plays. Pre kick time for the Texans. Ellington from the 30. Ellington with one good return tonight, and he'll get to the 40 yard line before Jay Prosh takes him down. 10 yard return for Bruce Ellington. And the Niners and Josh Johnson will start at the 40 yard line. And Jay Prosh is another name, a former fullback from Auburn, whose name we've heard twice tonight, who's been in the special teams tackles as well. He's another one of those guys. But this particular offense doesn't utilize the fullback a great deal. So even when you get out those diesel packages that they have with the two tight ends, if you're going to make this roster as a fullback, you've got to be excellent on special teams. First down and 10 at the 40 yard line. Play action. Johnson steps away from the rush, looking deep down the sideline. Lewis is there, and Lewis out of bounds. Andre Howe on the coverage. But out of bounds just shy of the 10 yard line on the lob from Josh Johnson. It covers 50 yards. Well, you got to have a snap and clear mentality if you're how. Again, the play action avoids the rush. Johnson steps up and delivers a strike using the boundary as his friend and got behind how did Lewis tight ropes it down for almost a touchdown. But again, giving up a big play, you make one, live another day. First down and 10 at the 11 yard line. Hmm. Fonso Smith hit hard at the seven yard line. Jawanza Starling on the tackle. Let's go downstairs. Drew Doherty standing by with a future Hall of Famer. That's right. Andre Johnson with me now, wide receiver. You know, earlier this week, you talked about being excited about this new offense. And why is that? Um, it's just, it's different. You know, uh, just moving around a lot, playing a lot of different positions. Um, you know, most of the times I, I, I was all, I've always been in a static position. So, uh, you know, it's just great now to be moved around, and uh, you know, I have to learn every position at the wide receiver position. You know, you talk about that about moving in different spots. You're excited. Yesterday, we spoke with Bill O'Brien in this meeting, the production meeting, and he threw his hands up and said he's excited. He doesn't care how old you are. You're still one of the best in the game. What's it like dealing with him? Because you've dealt with him since January 2nd or 3rd, haven't you? Yeah, I have. Um, me and him have been having a lot of conversations and things over this whole offseason. I mean, since he's got the job. So, uh, you know, his, he kept stressing to me, you know, man, if I could, you know, get you in here, you know, you can see, you know, how fun his offense can be for you. So, uh, you know, I'm here. You know, I'm, I'm, I've been learning everything I can. I'm learning every day. And, uh, you know, I'm just enjoying it, man. He makes it a lot of fun. You know, he's not a... A coach that's real, you know, kind of, I mean, he plays with everybody. You know, he's in the locker room, you know, hanging out with the guys at times, joking around with it. So he makes everything fun and very competitive. How tough is a night like tonight, knowing that you still got about a week to go, and that's when the fun starts? Well, I think anytime, you know, you have a game, you know, everybody wants to play. And, uh, you know, we didn't play tonight, of course, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be ready uh, when the rest is coming to time. All right, looking forward to it, Andre. Thanks so much for the time. Thanks for having me. And the second touchdown catch for the long snapper, Kyle Nelson, <laughs> who's enjoying this fourth preseason game and his chance to get his hands on the football and a rare opportunity for a long snapper. The Niners have a 39-13 lead. That's twice tonight, and again, he's making excellent plays. And if you want to make yourself valuable, you can stay in the league a long time just by being a long snapper. But if you can do this as well, I'll tell you what, you're like a 5-2 player in, in baseball, man. That's that's special stuff. Nelson getting congratulations. 
He's been all over the league as a long snapper. Those guys can stick around a long time with that skill. But tonight having a little fun as a pass catching tight end and the San Francisco 49ers have a 40 to 13 lead. San Francisco with a 40 to 13 lead 620 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Kevin Kugler, Spencer Tillman, Drew Doherty back with you from NRG Stadium. Next time those Texans cheerleaders will be going to work. It'll be for real September 7th when Washington comes calling to open up the 2014 season. Easy Wachaku from a yard and a half deep. Wachaku, and there's Kasim Osgood again, stopping him shy of the 10-yard line. Texans starting deep in their own end with 6.14 to play. Six fourteen to go, fourth quarter. 49ers forty, Texans thirteen. As we look at this wide receiver core, and in mind who makes the roster and who doesn't make the roster, eight guys on that list right there. Obviously, they're not going to carry eight into the regular season. Well, a lot of it has to do with the tight end situation. C.J. Fedorowicz looked exceptionally well. You know, Griffin and Graham will be part of that equation. Will a fourth guy step up and challenge the case? That hasn't been the case, so it looks like, you know, Bester is one of those guys that may be out of there. Denim has come on strong at times and looked pretty good, and Zach Potter was the first one that this regime signed, so Garrett Graham, Fedorowicz, Shures are locks among that group. Savage under some heat, and Savage able to make some positive yardage out to the 13-yard line. He picks up four, Quinton Dial on the tackle. Frustrating night, though, for the rookie Tom Savage, who will go back and watch tape and have more one on one time with Coach O'Brien to continue to improve. Well, he told us, you know, that the game was slowing down for him, and, and that's a good thing if it can happen to quarterback. But on that man under interception he threw, I think the game may have slowed down too much because he was a little bit lazy delivering that ball against man coverage. You've got to be on point, and you've got to get it out fast. Tobin Opurum on the carry to pick up three to the 16. Shane Scove on the tackle. 5.25 to go in the fourth, and San Francisco with a 40 to 13 lead. Texans now with the decision looming to make those final cuts by Saturday at 5 o'clock Central Time. Our first and 10 line this quarter brought to you by First Community Credit Union. And the Texans need two to get to that first down line. Savage going to run, trying to get to the outside, but he cannot shrug away from Mike Purcell, who makes the tackle back at the 15-yard line. Purcell in close pursuit, showing some nice center burst there in the restricted space and just showing you how he, you, know, you talk about those 40 times, they don't mean anything. It's really about what you can do in that 10-yard burst. And Purcell showed you he's got some of that burst, lateral movement as well to get the quarterback. There's Boswell back out to punt. If Boswell does not win the kicking job here, he's had the chance to show his skills the last couple of weeks, both as a kicker and a punter. Like a lot of these guys are to 31 other teams around the league. Bruce Ellington with the fair catch at the 38-yard line. That's really what this game is all about as well. We heard Rick Smith talking about how they've got to look at all the guys that get cut coming into the next week before they make their claims. That's what these guys are doing, putting themselves on tape for this team and for the rest of the teams in the league. And the Texans will kick off the 2014 season next Sunday, September 7th at noon against the Washington Redskins right here at NRG Stadium. If you're headed to the game, don't forget to wear white for the annual Liberty Whiteout presented by BHP Billiton. And one more reminder that the NFL's clear bag policy will be in effect. Log on to HoustonTexans.com for more information. down run to the 42 yard line Shiloh Ko again on the tackle of Alfonso Smith Shiloh's been active tonight and again as a run stopper he's been active in coverage making excellent tackles in open space and on special teams playing like a man trying to make a team and or an audition tape that's important these guys came into this knowing and Bill O'Brien addressed it with the players and said we understand that not all of you will be here 
after this weekend. And, you know, this is your chance to show not only for us, but for others. That's right. Second down and six. To the 45 yard line, three yard pickup. And it'll leave three yards shy for the first down for the San Francisco 49ers. And you know, one of the other things that Bill O'Brien talked about, he says, look, these guys have got to be somewhat selfish at this particular point. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's about you. It's about making plays, preserving your career, if that's the case, or making this roster or somebody else's roster. And you've got to be a little bit self-serving in that regard. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I've come out of game situation where we didn't win on the scoreboard, but I felt like I had a good performance. And you don't have to go around celebrating and bouncing all over the walls or not, but you can feel good about yourself. From the 45, third and three. Cleveland was the motion man. The carry for Winston. And Winston with a first down. Well, that was a gutsy call, but San Francisco 49ers had success on that play, running right into the teeth of a corner cat blitz and found good success on that one in the first down as well. The Texans ran a little bit of blitz off that left side and uh, got caught. Well, there's no question what Jim Harbaugh and offensive coordinator Greg Roman want to do in San Francisco. They have consistently built this franchise around establishing the run. They're second in the NFL since they took over in 2011 in rush yards. They were third in the league last year, averaging nearly 138 yards per game. They believe in a ground game. Give up the fiddle, not a lot of running room. And it's almost a form of kind of like counter programming. Everybody knows that about maybe four or five years ago, this officially became a passing league. But if you can still run the football, you can have a counter to that. Let them spread you out. We'll be tough and physical and still beat you. Two minute warning here in Houston, San Francisco with a 40 to 13 advantage over the Texans. Final two minutes of the preseason. Here in Houston, 49ers with a 40 to 13 lead over the Texans. Kevin Kugler, Spencer Tillman, Drew Doherty at NRG Stadium. In these final two minutes, the focus will shift from the preseason to the regular season in Washington in town on September 7th. Running room again for Winston, and Winston caught from behind by Mike Muhammad inside the 35 yard line. Here's the regular season schedule. The Redskins followed by trips to Oakland and New York going coast to coast with the Texans in the first month with Buffalo in to close the month. Then the matchup with Dallas starts October. Three road games November and, Dece and December. So a lot of chances to see the Texans at home in the final two months of the regular season. And a chance to see an old friend Matt Schaub there the Oakland Raiders out the West Coast. That'll be interesting. Of good moments for the Houston Texans did shop over the years. Obviously didn't end the way he wanted it to last year or the Texans as Josh Johnson takes the knee starts the clock and the Niners content to get back on the plane and head home. They'll open at Dallas before they open Levi Stadium officially on Sunday night football against the Bears in week two and then a big divisional matchup when they go to Arizona middle of September. Well, having gotten just their first preseason win last week, I don't think all of their offensive demons have been exercised, but Jim Harbaugh has got to feel more confident about how his team executed from an offensive standpoint today. Johnson with one more knee, and that's going to do it. The two teams will head out onto the field to shake hands and head into the regular season. Now it's time to announce the Yahoo Sports Fantasy Football standout. And on the defensive side of the ball tonight, Andre Howe, 77 yard interception return for the touchdown. And of course, the two tackles start a league today at yahoo.com slash fantasy football. Now, for a chance to win four VIP tickets to a regular season game, go to abc13.com and enter Andre Howe. Good luck. Andre Howe with one of the bright spots tonight for the Houston Texans. And you know, Bill O'Brien will go back, evaluate. Ian Rick Smith and the coaching staff will all sit down, discuss those cuts. And General Manager Rick Smith telling us earlier in the broadcast that the majority of those cuts will happen tomorrow. So the roster, at least as it will start to take shape, it will start to take shape tomorrow. The waiver wire has to be claimed by Sunday for the Texans. See if anybody comes up there. 49ers 40, Texans 13. We'll have more from NRG Stadium in a moment on Texans TV.